In the previous video, I discussed the role of circadian rhythm in humans, focusing on the cycle of sleep and wake, the role of an internal body clock and how this could be adjusted for by the sun. But are there rhythms faster or slower than a 24 hour cycle? And if so, how are they altered? In this episode of Psych Boost, the menstrual cycle in Freudian rhythms. So we know circadian means around the day. How about infradian? Infra in Latin means below, in this case below the frequency of once a day. So a rhythm that takes longer, perhaps many days to complete. So with ultradian rhythms, ultra is Latin for beyond, and in this case beyond means more frequent. So a rhythm that occurs many times a day, more than once every 24 hours. If you're struggling to remember which way around infradian or tradian go, keep in your mind infradian is infrequent. Infradian rhythms. The most obvious infradian biological rhythm in humans is the female cycle of fertility called the menstrual cycle. That's what I'll be describing and evaluating. But there are rhythms longer than a day, like for example seasonal affective disorder or SAD. A year-long infradian rhythm in which mood lowers in winter and improves in summer thought to be due to the lack of natural light in winter months. The menstrual cycle is a 28-day cycle with a 6-day period of fertility. However, cycles can be shorter or longer, ranging from between 24 to 35 days. Biological aspects of this cycle include releasing the egg, thickening of the womb lining, and the loosening of the womb lining during menstruation. These biological changes are regulated by the hormones estrogen and progesterone. The levels of these hormones then are the endogenous pacemakers, keeping the biological processes to time, acting as an internal body clock for the menstrual cycle. Research evaluation. Research evidence for how the menstrual and fradian rhythm can be shifted by an environmental cue, or endogenous zeitgeber, is by McKintock. McKintock's original research in 1971 of 135 women who lived at the same dormitory at university showed women appeared to synchronise their cycles with their friendship groups. Other researchers appeared to show similar findings, like Russell in 1980. McKintock built on this research and suggested that synchronisation could be due to women sharing pheromones. Stern and McKintock in 1998 investigated this. 20 women were given pads to wipe on their top lip every day. These pads had been taken from the armpits of nine donor women at varying stages of their menstrual cycle. The researchers found that the women would either shorten or extend their menstrual cycle depending on when in the donor woman's menstrual cycle the pad had been collected. Suggesting synchronization due to the presence of pheromones, these acting as an exogenous zeitgeber or external cue for the infradian rhythm. Evaluation of the infradian rhythm. This area is controversial. While it's undoubted that women have an infradian rhythm of fertility, the idea that it changes due to the presence of pheromones has been heavily criticised. While there are some studies with similar findings of McKintock's original research, there are also a large number of studies that have attempted and failed to replicate findings that women who live together synchronise menstrual cycles. In the case of Trevor Van in 1993, even cohabiting lesbian couples didn't synchronise the optimal conditions for possible synchronisation. Also, as menstrual cycles can vary in length, women can appear to synchronise just due to the variability in their cycles, something not taken into consideration in all the studies showing positive results. The evolutionary arguments are also conflicting. Some evolutionary psychologists would say female synchronising could be explained as having an adaptive advantage, working as a way to stop one male dominating a group and having all the children. He simply can't impregnate all the women at once if they synchronise. This leads to genetic diversity in small human groups. However, other evolutionary theorists argue against this, that synchronisation will be maladaptive due to women wanting to be fertilised by the male with the best genes, and men needing to compete with other women for him if they synchronised. Bonus fact. Throughout history, people have thought that their menstrual cycle was controlled by the phases of the moon. Many traditional facility ceremonies around the world have been based on this idea. Even the word menstrual has its roots in the Greek word mene, meaning moon. 
Now this is an understandable theory, as the moon cycle is 29.5 days, about the same as the average human woman's menstrual period. But data scientists from the menstrual cycle tracking app Clue looked at information provided by over 1.5 million women and found no link to menstrual frequency matching either the new or full moon phases. Also, if it had an evolutionary advantage, we'd expect to see it in our closest evolutionary relatives, the chimpanzees. But they have a 35-day cycle. Unfortunately, this is a case of correlation, not causation. I hope you found this Psych Boost video useful. If you did, I've made more than 140 other psychology videos to help you with your studies, as well as a website full of free resources. If you want to help Psych Boost grow, subscribe and like. Also, tell your teacher and anyone else you know who studies psychology about the channel. Thanks for watching. Keep studying.